Welcome to Live Parkinson's, Live an Exceptional Life. I'm your host, Chris Kustenbotter, and I've been living with Parkinson's for the past 14 years. The mission of this podcast is to help people living with Parkinson's lead a great quality of life. Now, today's topic is From Tremors to Triumph, Five Proven Strategies to Crush Exercise Barriers and Thrive with Parkinson's. Now, forget everything you think you know about exercise and Parkinson's, because in this podcast, we're throwing out the rule book and embracing a radical approach. We're talking motivational hacks that actually work, strategies to outsmart fatigue and pain, and secrets to turn exercise into your secret weapon. In this podcast, Tremors to Triumph, we'll explore five proven methods that have helped real people with Parkinson's not just move, but thrive. Are you ready to unlock your potential? Then let's go. Now, before we dive into today's topic, I wanted to share with you an exciting offer from Audible for listeners of Live Parkinson's. Who is Audible? They're a one-stop source for audio entertainment. Audible offers thousands of titles on audio books and podcasts, as well as offering Audible Originals, featuring top celebrities and renowned experts. Two of the books that I've read and highly recommend that you can find on Audible are No Time Like the Future. An Optimist Considers Mortality by Michael J. Fox. And the other is Parkinson's Treatment, 10 Secrets to a Happier Life by Dr. Michael Oaken. Now, in addition, the Audible app makes it easier to listen and find your audiobooks and podcasts anywhere and anytime and anywhere you go. Audible is offering new members a free 30-day trial by visiting audibletrial.com slash liveparkinson's. That's Audible trial.com slash live Parkinson's a U D I B L E T R I A L.com slash live Parkinson's. Now for full disclosure, if you sign up for the free 30 day trial, I earn a small commission from audible, which I use to help fund this podcast. So if you sign up for the free 30 day trial, I thank you for supporting this podcast. Please decide if this promotion is right for you. Now, let's dive into today's topic from Tremors to Triumph. Now, I'll be completely honest with you. Do I also spring out of bed with boundless energy and excitement, ready to hit the gym and exercise like an Olympic athlete? Of course not. And I would be lying to you if I said I did. There are days when I wake up and feel tired and fatigued, or my shoulder and my back hurt, and I think to myself, Do I really feel like going to the gym today? But I've been using five proven strategies to help me overcome that internal struggle of, do I feel like exercising? With, of course, I'm going to exercise. So in this podcast, I'm going to share with you these five proven strategies that get me to exercise seven days a week and that have helped me thrive and live an exceptional life with Parkinson's these past 14 years. Now, remember, Exercise is one of the keys to unlocking an active and engaged life. For any of you that have read my book, exercise was one of the four key strategies that I talked about in helping me live an exceptional life. And I believe it's right up there with your medication. So think of exercise as part of your medication regimen. You take your medication to help you manage your symptoms, and exercise is going to work in tandem with your medications to give you the best possible outcomes. So let's take a look at what we'll be discussing in this podcast. In part one, which I'll call Recognizing the Enemy, Common Exercise Barriers in Parkinson's. We'll discuss six of the top barriers to exercise with Parkinson's. I'd be interested to hear from you if you've experienced any of these or have others to add. Then in part two, we'll talk about outsmarting the obstacles. We'll discuss the five proven strategies for overcoming exercise barriers and staying motivated. Then in part three, inspiration and action, I'll share personal success stories and success stories from Parkinson's community to show that you have the power to overcome exercise obstacles. And we want you to reap the benefits that exercise can provide in living a great quality of life. Now, as an added bonus, if you listen to the end, I'll provide a, a Parkinson's playlist of uplifting music that I use for exercise motivation. So let's get the exercise train rolling and start with recognizing the enemy and looking at some of the common exercise barriers in Parkinson's. 
Now, while the benefits of exercise for improving symptoms and, and your quality of life in Parkinson's are undeniable, there's a, a number of factors that can make maintaining an active routine challenging. So let's delve into the complexities of each of these barriers and how you can overcome them. Let's start with motor symptoms. Fatigue and low energy, we'll talk about that first. And that's the hallmark feature of Parkinson's. And it can severely limit your motivation and your stamina. Let's be honest. Do you really feel like exercising if you're fatigued and worn down and don't have any energy? Absolutely not. And fatigue, as we all know, can make even simple tasks feel extraordinary, make, making the thought of exercise dawning. Now, I can speak about this on a personal level. In the other podcast, I mentioned that I had trouble with insomnia. Now, I don't have any trouble falling asleep, but staying asleep is the problem. I'm up several hours during the night, and I wake up early every day, which I like to call O-Dark 30. Now, some days, depending on when I went to bed, I may only get three or four hours of sleep. Now, it's on these days, and I wouldn't say I'm jumping out of bed and I'm excited and full of lots of energy. And I don't think to myself, wow, it's 2.30 or 3 o'clock in the morning. I feel great. I can't wait till the gym opens and I can go and swim laps or take a fitness class. I mean, honestly, that's the last thing on my mind. But more like I just want to crawl up and take a nice nap, even though I'm having trouble sleeping. But anyhow... Here's an important part in the, in the key to learning is I understand that exercise is important in helping me stay active. So I put my sneakers on and I head to the gym. And then usually remarkably what I find is that as I'm working out, I start to have more energy. And then I actually start to feel better and I start to feel more energetic. Then when I'm done, if I'm still tired, I can go home and take a nap, especially a short power nap of you know, 15 to 20 minutes. So that was the first barrier, and that was fatigue and low energy. And again, one of the ways that you can overcome that is just make the decision to put your sneakers on, either go for a, call a friend and go for a walk, or lace up the sneakers and go to the gym and take an exercise class or work on your balance, or go swimming, take a, a water aerobics class. Now, a second barrier I want to talk about is tremors and rigidity. And we all know, those of us that have Parkinson's, we all know what tremors are. And, and we also experience muscle stiffness, which can affect our balance and our coordination. And then if we don't feel like we have good balance and coordination or confident, we're not going to be very confident. And that often leads to, well, my balance isn't very good today. Uh, maybe I'll pass on the exercise. Now, I know when I have these days and when I'm very stiff, I can overcome the stiffness by spending time at the gym working on stretching and flexibility. So on those days where maybe you're stiff or you're you're having some balance problems, work on exercises that are low impact and gentle. One of the, another thing I do besides stretching and flexibility if I'm very stiff is I participate in a yoga or tai chi class and it helps me overcome the rigidity. Now, if you're having trouble with your balance, See if your gym offers chair yoga exercises. Those things can help you to overcome some of the, the confidence issues you have when you're having difficulty with tremors, rigidity, or balance and coordination. There's always ways to get around that. Or on the days that you're having balance problems, maybe go and take a water class, something low impact. I know they have one at the gym I go to called Tone and Stretch. And that focuses just on stretching and toning your your muscles while you're in the water. And that's very low impact. Another common barrier to exercise that we all experience is pain and discomfort. I know I have joint pain. I have shoulder problems, muscle aches, and stiffness. And they can be exacerbated by certain exercises. And a lot of times, if we start to lift weights when we haven't lifted weights for a while, we're going to be sore and we're going to have muscle aches and we're going to be stiff. And then what that sometimes does is creates a negative association that exercise isn't good for me because it makes me sore. It makes me stiff. Be able to push through that because typically if you're just starting out, sure, you're going to be sore or you're going to feel a little stiffness the first day or two. But once you get past that, then you'll see that exercise is going to provide a host of different benefits. 
Now, for instance, if you're new to exercising and you've been taking a break or you've been taking a break from exercise, don't decide to go all out and I'm going to go in and do, I'm going to lift weights and I'm going to do 20 reps of eight different exercises because you're not going to be able to move the next two days because you're going to be so sore. So you want to start out slow and gentle and then ease into it. That's going to help you maintain consistency and exercise. So it's not going to do you any good if you decide, well, I'm going to go gangbusters at the gym. You go in and you go crazy on the machines or you go crazy on weightlifting and then you're so sore that you can't move. So if you're new to exercise and you do have some pain or discomfort, seek guidance from either a certified personal trainer and or your healthcare professional and ask them to help you with exercises that won't exacerbate your pain or cause damage to your joints. So for instance, I have problems with my shoulder. So I work with a certified personal trainer and she helps me do exercises that strengthen my shoulder, but also that provide flexibility to the shoulder as well. Now, some non-motor symptoms that can play a big role in being a barrier to exercise is depression and anxiety. Now, I've read different statistics, but I've read that depression and anxiety can occur in up to 60% or even 80% of people with Parkinson's. So they're both common conditions and they often uh, co-occur together. So some a lot of people have depression and anxiety. So it doesn't have to be mutually exclusive. And as we all know, if you're depressed or you're anxious, that can sap your motivation and your energy. And you're not going to want to do activities like exercise because it can feel overwhelming. Interestingly, though, exercise has been shown to help improve the outlook of people with anxiety and depression. So if you feel like you're sad or depressed or you feel anxious, going to the gym because as you're working out, your body's going to release the neurotransmitters that make you feel good. And so, I mean, again, we've all heard of the runner's high, but you're going to, it's going to release those neurotransmitters are going to make you feel good and make you want to go out and do some things for the rest of the day. Now, a couple of ways to overcome this barrier to have an exercise buddy. Find somebody you feel comfortable with and exercise together, whether it be walking, swimming, cycling. That's going to help hold you accountable, and especially when you don't feel like exercising. And then secondly, working out with the buddies, it's going to help you be accountable because you're going to say, oh, my buddy wants to go and ride the bike or my buddy wants to go for a walk, so I'm going to do it. So a buddy's going to help keep you accountable. Now, another thing you could do is create an upbeat and energetic playlist that you can exercise to. The music gives you a, a sense of energy. It gives you a sense of motivation, and it can help you make sure that your exercise is fun and exciting. And it also helps pass the time. When you're listening to music, you're not paying attention to, to the time. And you know, before you know it, you've worked out for 30 to 45 minutes, and you say, wow. So playlists are another great way to overcome depression and anxiety as a barrier to exercise. Another non-motor symptom that can play a big role in being an obstacle to exercise is cognitive impairments. Memory problems and difficulty planning can make adhering to an exercise routine and remembering instructions challenging. Now, I mentioned before, I have problems with executive function. So if you give me a task with several steps, I have difficulty remembering some of the steps. So I often, if I'm doing something at with a trainer and it's a three or four step process, I have to walk through the exercise once or twice so that I remember what the pattern is and then I'll be able to, to do the pattern successfully when I'm exercising. So that's one of the ways that I can overcome my problem with executive function is just taking my time and breaking it down into steps and then taking those steps and putting them together and then, then I'm able to do the exercise as it was designed. And then another thing I like to do when I exercise to help with memory problems or difficulty with my, my planning is to do what I call dual exercises, where I incorporate a cognitive exercise into my exercise program. So for example, I, let's say I'm doing a balance exercise. At the same time, if I'm standing on one foot, I'm going to say the months of the year backwards. Or if I'm 
doing something or um, doing squats. I might count to 100 by fours, things like that. So I'm including a cognitive exercise and a physical exercise together, and that's going to help me overcome any cognitive problems or impairments that I may have as a barrier to exercise. Another one is sleep disturbances. Now, poor sleep quality and daytime drowsiness, as we know, cause fatigue and and re they reduce your energy levels. And therefore, you have reduced energy levels. You're going to say to yourself, I don't feel like going to the gym. I don't feel like exercising. You're not going to make me do it. And I know it can be difficult. And what I do to overcome this obstacle is to exercise in the morning when I have my peak energy. And then I take either a short nap or I do activities requiring less energy later in the day. So think about the times of the day where you have your peak energy. Like again, mine happens to be early in the morning. So that's when I go to the gym and get my exercise in because that's when I have the most energy and that's going to help me ensure that I get my exercise in as well. Now, some external factors that can play a role in making it challenging to exercise include access to suitable exercise programs. Finding programs specifically designed for Parkinson's can be challenging. Now, I happen to be lucky and have the benefit of being part of a group called Momentum, which is designed for people with Parkinson's and other neurological disorders. So the program is focused on exercises that are going to help with Parkinson's symptoms. So we work on balance, we work on stretching and flexibility, we work on cognition and some other things. So look in your area and find if they have programs that are specifically targeted to people with Parkinson's. Another one I can think of off the top of my head would be rock steady boxing. That's a good program to help people with their Parkinson's symptoms as well. And then you could seek the help of your healthcare professional as well, or a certified trainer. They can help design an exercise program that will meet your needs if you can't find one in your area. Another obstacle would be cost and transportation limitations. When money's tight, joining a gym can be financially challenging. And also, certain situations, it might be a logistical problem. Maybe you don't drive anymore. In this case, you can look for exercise programs that you can do at home. There's a lot of great Parkinson's exercise programs on YouTube, or you can ask your healthcare professional for uh, some suggestions on exercise programs that you can do at home. Walking with a friend or family member is also a non-cost way to get your exercise in. Same thing with cycling. Plus, you get to enjoy the outdoors and nature as well. Another one is fear of falling. And fear of falling with Parkinson's, you know, makes some people apprehensive about exercise, and you can't blame them. If you go and you're exercising, you're afraid of falling, and it can cause injury. Plus, it's also, you know, a lot of people feel embarrassed if they fall. So they don't want to go and exercise because they have a fear of falling. So one of the ways to get around that is you can seek help from your healthcare professional and a certified trainer to help design programs to improve your balance and stability and reduce the risk of falls. So if you have better balance and you have a strong core and more stability, it helps reduce the risk of falls. Now let's turn our attention to some of the misconceptions and beliefs that are common barriers to exercise. The first one is negative self-image. Now, since I have Parkinson's, I can't do physical activity or, or, or I look funny or I feel funny and, people, and I'm going to be embarrassed if I go to the gym. That's the way a, a lot of people with Parkinson's feel. They don't want to go to a gym because they feel like, number one, everybody's looking at them because of their, maybe they have tremor or their symptoms or they're having trouble walking or they have dyskinesias. Number one, they feel embarrassed. But number two, they, oh, I can't keep up with the people at the gym. One of the things about the gym that you'll find is that people are so focused on their own exercise that they're not really paying attention to what anybody else is doing. And then also you'll find that most people in the gym are more than willing to help if you don't understand, for instance, how to use a piece of equipment. And they're always willing to help. Group fitness classes are great because you can modify the exercises. You've got people in there that cheer each other on and we they hold each other accountable. So don't let the fear of thinking that you have to go in and be able to bench press 350 pounds and you know do all kinds of squats and other things 
to keep up. That's not the case. You have peoples of all, all ages and physical exercise levels. So go and make a friend and pretty soon you'll be saying to yourself, wow, this is great. I made a friend and I'm exercising on a consistent basis. Another one is understanding the benefits. If you don't understand the significant impact that exercise can have on managing your symptoms and your overall well-being, it can lead people to prioritize other activities and neglect exercise. So people might say, well, exercise really isn't that important. So uh, maybe I'll read a book or uh, I'll go to the grocery store or I'll go to the movies instead. And so exercise falls by the wayside. It's key that you, you try to exercise as much as possible, and that's going to help manage your, and maintain your symptoms. And then setting unrealistic expectations. And this is something that we all do. And I'll be honest, I do. I'm guilty of this myself, seeking immediate results. We get discouraged when we don't see immediate results and improvement, especially in our symptoms. And then we say to ourselves, well, I'm not seeing any improvement after the first week or the first three or four days, so I might as well quit. It's not it's not doing me any good. I mean, we've all been there. But it's crucial to stay the course because progress takes time and consistency is the key. So it's key that you stay consistent with your exercise. And as you stay consistent and you go on a regular basis, you're going to reap the benefits that exercise provides. And then another one that I know that I do as well is setting overly ambitious goals. Setting goals that are too challenging and unrealistic leads to frustration because if you set a too high a goal and you're never able to achieve that goal, then you're just going to quit. And one of the ways to get around that is to set short and long-term challenging but achievable goals. And then once you achieve those goals, then you want to reward yourself for doing it, being able to reach your goal. All right, now we've addressed the elephant in the room and discussed the barriers that often prevent us from exercise. Let's turn our attention to the five proven strategies that can help make exercise a priority and make it something that we do on a consistent basis. Now, I know that Parkinson's may throw some punches at you, but your fitness journey doesn't have to be a fight. So let's try to make fitness and exercise both fun and something that you want to do rather than making it something that's a chore or it's miserable, but you feel like you have to slog through it. So let's discuss the five proven strategies to help crush exercise barriers, some of those that we just discussed. The very first strategy is find your fit. And I want to talk about variety. Now, variety is not only the spice of life, but it's also a key to any quality exercise program. You don't want to get stuck in a rut. So you want to try to explore as many different activities as possible so that you can rotate on a daily basis. Plus, you want to be able to have more of a holistic program so you're, you're, that your body doesn't become used to a certain exercise and you plateau and you just stick there. So try to look and explore diff all kinds of different activities like walking, swimming, yoga, tai chi, boxing, dancing, water aerobics, Zumba classes. You want to also include activities that cover the gambit of aerobic exercise, meaning you, where the, you're getting your heart rate up and it's helping with your cardiovascular function. And then one that also includes strength and flexibility, stretching, and balance. So there's a lot of different programs and activities out there, whether they be group fitness classes or something that you do on your own. Try to spice up your exercise program. And the key is also pick things that you enjoy. Because if you don't enjoy it, you're not going to do it. So for me, if someone said, oh, I want you to take a Zumba class. Well, I'm not the greatest dancer, so I'm probably not going to do it. So I try to pick, I pick things that I like to do. I like to swim. I like to walk. I like to do the yoga type classes. I like to cycle. So I'm varying my exercises, but I'm doing things that I love to do. And that's one of the things that keeps me consistent. And then as part of variety and fitness and fun, you want to start small and scale up. Now, this is especially true, again, if you're new to exercising or you haven't exercised for quite a long time. You want to start with gentle, 
low impact ex exercises and gradually increase your, your intensity and the duration. And that's going to help you build both your confidence and your strength over time. So for instance, I talked this example before, but if you're walking and you haven't been walking before, don't say I'm going to go out and walk 10 miles today because number one, you're probably not going to be able to do it. And number two, you're going to be so sore the next day. Start out with maybe, maybe take a Tai Chi or a yoga class or, you know, a low impact water aerobics class. So start out small and then every couple of days gradually increase the intensity and the duration. And you'll find that it's a lot easier to stay consistent with your exercise. And then another thing is to embrace adaptive exercises. Now, a lot of the gyms and other facilities now have programs that are specifically designed for Parkinson's, or they can offer modified exercises and equipment to get to help you optimize your workout. So now, again, I happen to participate in the uh, Momentum Group, which is a Parkinson's and exercise and cognitive group. And we do all kinds of different exercises that help with our Parkinson's and help us live a great quality of life. So if you want to learn more about that, the Momentum Program, uh, please listen to my recent podcast on the Momentum Program. Interview the co-creators of the program, Susanna Gillespie and Jen Winner. Now, in addition, most group fitness classes can help you modify the exercises and help you meet your Parkinson's exercise goals. So at the same time as being able to challenge yourself, you can also build off everybody else's energy and also hold, hold each other accountable. So that's strategy number one. Strategy number two is befriend motivation and not pressure. Now, what do I mean by that? You don't want exercise. You don't want to feel pressured when you're, you're exercising. You want, to, you want it to be motivational. And one of the ways you can do that is to set SMART goals. S-M-A-R-T. And what that means is you want to make your goals. S is specific. M is measurable. A is achievable. R is relevant and T is time bound. So to give you an example of a smart goal, you may say, I want to cycle for 30 minutes, five days a week, and then I'm going to measure it by, did I cycle? I mean, every day I cycle, I'm going to track that. Is it achievable? If I've been cycling, sure, it's achievable. I can do that. Is it relevant? Yes, I love to cycle, so it's it's relevant to part of the, my program. And then is it time-bound? Yeah, I'm, I'm doing it for 30 minutes, and I'm doing it five times a week. So that would be an example of a SMART goal. And then I can measure it at the end. And then as I'm progressing through my goals, you want to reward yourself and celebrate small wins along the way. So just don't focus on the finish line celebrate successes along the way too. So maybe at the end of the first month, you say, well, I did five days a week and I did four straight weeks of riding the, the bike four days a week. And then, you know, reward yourself with something that you enjoy. And maybe it's a small ice cream cone or whatever it happens to be. Secondly, you want to visualize success. So as part of motivation and to one of the ways to keep pressure down is you vis visualize success. So imagine yourself completing the exercise and then feeling energized and empowered. Now, positive visualization can help you feel motivated. For example, if you're lifting weights, close your eyes and imagine yourself, whatever the exercise happens to be, visualize yourself completing the exercise. And you'll find that when it comes time to do the exercise, it makes it easier because you've, you've already visualized that you can do it. As an example, a lot of times you see Olympic athletes using visualization techniques. Let me give you some examples. If you're watching the Winter Olympics, a lot of times you'll see the bobsledders or skiers sitting off in a corner by themselves with their eyes closed, visualizing the course. And you can see them moving their bodies with the course. So they're actually visualizing in, in their mind how they're going to run the course. And then that way, when it comes time to run the course, they're already very familiar with it. Now, as part of motivation and not pressure, you want to be able to reward yourself. So after a workout, treat yourself to something you enjoy because you want to reinforce the positive association with exercise. Now, I have a friend that 
teaches water aerobics and she also swims a mile after she does that. So when she treats herself to a Starbucks coffee after she does that. So she'll go and teach her water aerobics class or classes. She'll swim a mile. And then she says to herself, I'm going to go over and get a Starbucks coffee as my reward. So make sure you reward yourself, whatever it happens to be. And then buddy up, find a friend or family member to exercise with because they're going to give you accountability and you're going to be able to encourage each other. That's another reason why I like group fitness classes. You can make friends with the people in the class and hold each other accountable. So, That's a great way to help stay motivated and keep exercise fun and not pressured. Strategy number three is listen to your body, not your doubts. Now, we talked about fatigue, and I know fatigue is real, but it's also manageable. Listen to your body and adjust your routine as needed. And I talked about this a little bit earlier, but exercise when you feel the most energetic because that's going to help you maximize your workout. And then rest when you need to. But don't let fatigue be an exercise excuse to stop you altogether. Now, I found in myself when I'm talking to others, if I give in when I'm tired and I make a, quote, good excuse for not exercising on a particular day, it becomes much easier the next time to give in and not exercise. So you don't want to get into the habit of making excuses why you can't exercise. Now, I've read that it takes 21 days to to form a habit. So try to exercise for 21 consecutive days and see if you can form an exercise habit. Now, as part of this too, pain doesn't have to dictate your exercise. Exercise shouldn't cause pain. Of course, some discomfort is common when you exercise, especially when you're using muscles that you don't typically use or that you don't use very often. I'll give you an example. I take a bar class That's B-A-R-R-E again. And that's a combination of yoga, Pilates, and cardio and some other things. And we do exercises that often focus on small movements and use muscle groups that aren't used very often. And this can cause discomfort when you're doing a lot of reps of small movement on, for instance, some of the muscles in your hip joint, you feel discomfort. And, but you're, what you're doing is it's helping you improve the flexibility and the movement in that particular joint. Because of the improvements I see, it makes me want to attend and participate on a constant basis. Now, if your exercise is causing pain, especially sharp, acute pain, and or interferes with your movement, you need to consult a, a healthcare professional to see what's going on. And also talk to a certified fitness trainer because you shouldn't be feeling pain, especially sharp, acute pain when you're exercising. And then also if you're feeling intense pain, again, you want to see a healthcare professional to make sure you didn't do any damage to your muscles or your joints. Now, one thing I really want to stress is that one of the biggest causes of pain and injury in people that exercise is improper or bad form. Bad form puts undue stress on your joints, muscles, tendons, and ligaments, and that can lead to injury and pain. So please consult a healthcare professional or certified fitness trainer to ensure you're doing your exercises with correct form. Now, another piece of this section is mind over matter. You want to practice self-talk and use mindfulness techniques to combat your negative thoughts and anxiety about exercise. Now, remember, you're capable and strong. You can do it. Now, when you're living with Parkinson's, it's easy to feel self-conscious. I, we talked about in public with balance problems or tremors. And this translates to the, when we go to the gym that, oh, everybody's looking at me and I don't want that. And again, people are focused on themselves and not really considering you. So please, if you go to the fitness center, don't worry about what other people are doing because they're worried about themselves. But if you need help, there are people there to help you as well. Now, moving on to strategy number four. We'll call it, make it play, not a chore. Now, remember we said that exercise should be fun, not a chore or a job. Now, to make it play and have fun is one of the things you can do is turn up the tunes. And again, create a playlist of your favorite upbeat music. It gets your body moving and helps you get focused on an enjoyable workout. Now, I personally have several different playlists that I use for exercise, depending on the type of exercise I'm doing. For instance, I have four different playlists for boxing that I use. 
and those are usually a group of high energy rock songs. And then I try to use creative names to separate things like Knockout or 10 Rounds or TKO. And for some of my cycling playlists, I have Ride Like the Wind or No Nature Outdoor Cycling, whatever it happens to be. So try to come up with some creative names as well and pick music that you love and get you pumped up and you'll breeze right through your exercise program. Also, get outdoors. Take your workout to the park or anywhere you live that can go out into nature. The fresh air and sunshine can work miracles on improving both your mood and your motivation. Now, I'll give you an example. When my son lived in Charleston, South Carolina, I was down visiting, and I would cycle to the park every day and then do some cross-training circuits, or I would do some yoga moves. But it was great to do it outdoors because you were out there, you had squirrels running around, you had birds chirping, it was a, people walking dogs. It was a, it's just a great experience. And then other days I would, you know, walk down to the bat, what they call the battery, which is right on the bay and work on my balance. Just being outside and exercising was just a great experience. Oh, another thing you can do to make it play and not a chore is to make it social. Join an exercise class or find a workout buddy who shares your interests. Having fun together with your workout buddy or people in your group fitness class makes exercise more enjoyable and sustainable. Now I do both of these. I participate in five different group fitness classes. I do soul fusion, bar, spin, water aerobics, and the momentum program for people with Parkinson's. These classes are not only fun for me, but they give me variety in my exercise program as well. And then in addition, I get to see the same people across a lot of the classes. So we've gotten to be good friends and which is really helpful in making sure that I exercise. And then I also exercise with a buddy twice a week because I enjoy their company and they keep me accountable as well. So make sure that you make it social. Okay, moving on to strategy number five. Celebrate every victory, not just the finish line. So the first thing you want to do is focus on progress, not on perfection. Now, every movement and every minute is going to count while you're exercising. But you want to be careful not to compare yourself with others and just celebrate your, your journey in your own unique way. Now, I hope you heard the word journey because exercise is part of your Parkinson's journey. It's not a destination. It's always changing and evolving. It's a journey. So enjoy every minute along your journey. Now, I like to set short, mid, and long-term goals. The short-term goals allow me to celebrate success and progress more often. Now, the midterm goals, which I'll call three, six, and nine months, give me a challenge to work towards. It's nice looking back after three months and seeing the progress that I've made. I reward myself for each milestone that I reach. And then once I reach one of these goals, I add new ones to work on. And then finally, my long-term goals are usually about a year and usually no more than 18 months. And these are usually bigger goals that take a lot longer to achieve. For example, for 2024, my long-term goal is to lose 65 pounds in a year. Now, because this requires more time and effort, I consider it a long-term goal. However, I also have short-term and mid-term goals that trickle from that main goal that I have built in. So for instance, my short-term goal is to lose 10 pounds in the first month. And then I'm trying to lose about two pounds per week after that. So I'm focusing on my progress and I'm not trying to be perfect because there are going to be days when I don't eat as well as I should and maybe I don't exercise as long as I should either. So I'm not focusing on perfection. I'm focusing on progress. The next thing you want to do is track your achievements. Use a journal or an app to record your progress. Seeing how far you've come can be a powerful motivation, motivational tool for continued success. Now, I personally use an Apple Watch to track all my workouts. It can track my distance, my time, my active calories, heart rate, and several other things. Plus, the Apple Watch has challenges that are built in that I can participate in and earn badges. So that kind of helps me stay accountable as well. And because I'm using the Apple Watch, I can look back and, and check my progress for the, for the past month to see how I've been doing. And then finally, embrace setbacks as learning opportunities. Now, you may have heard the old adage, two steps forward and one step back, or three steps forward and two steps back. This happens to be part of your exercise program as well. You may be progressing well with certain exercises, and then suddenly you, you, you hit the proverbial wall, 
and you stay the same or you regress for a few days. Maybe it's a few days, maybe it's a week or more. Now, we all experience this, so don't let it depress you or cause you to quit exercising. Uh, let me give you a little personal story to illustrate this point. I was having trouble sleeping, and during one of my visits to the doctor, we decided to try a sleep medication. So over the next several weeks, as I was taking the sleep medication, I was really struggling with my exercise. I frequently had to stop to rest. I was sweating, and my heart was racing, and it was really higher than it, it should have been. And the, the trainer noticed that my drop in exercise capability and asked if everything was okay. I said I was frustrated because I couldn't understand why I was so lethargic and struggling during the exercise. And then finally, after a few days, I was able to target the problem, which was side effects from the sleep medication. So I called the doctor and told him the symptoms that I was having and the side effects. And he told me to stop taking the medication. And then about two or three days after taking the medication, my exercise progress started to come back. And then after a week or so, I was back on track and returned to normal. So we all have setbacks. We all have times where we hit the wall and we just have to figure out, do we need to change something or is there something else that's affecting our progress? And one of the things I like to say is we're, you know, we're capable of doing more than we think we're capable of doing. You know, so when we experience setbacks, think of it as just bumps in the road on our journey to a great quality of life through exercise. Now, remember, the sun always shines in the morning after a bad storm the night before. So you're going to have those days where you're going to have setbacks, but you just keep pushing forward and you'll, you'll definitely see progress. Now, to close this out, I wanted to share a few success stories. And these are success stories of people with Parkinson's that I've gotten to know over the last four to five years that are part of my momentum class. So I'll, I'll use first names and initials only. But uh, the first person I'd like to talk about is John H. John H. has Parkinson's and he has, when he, we first, when he first started in the class, if we do exercises on the floor, we get down on mats. He had a really difficult time getting up off the floor and often needed help of others. And after coming to class and participating on a consistent basis, John's na now able to get up off the floor by himself and do it in a pretty rapid manner. So he's come a long way. So that's just a, and John's, He's 80 years old, so he's done a great job of coming to class on a consistent basis, and it's shown results that have helped him improve his quality of life. The next person I'd like to talk about is Melissa G. She teaches water aerobics classes and participates in spin classes, and she also comes to the momentum class. So when she first started, she had difficulty with spin class as well. But now she comes to spin class and she's able to successfully complete spin class. And then she also teaches aerobics classes as well. So when she teaches water aerobics, she'll teach two classes in a row and then come to momentum class. So by exercising on a consistent basis, she's been able to show great improvement and great progress in her well-being and her quality of life. So she's come a long way. And then I'd like to talk about Joan. Joan went from pretty much no exercise when she first came into the momentum class. But Joan has been a consistent member of the class. And she went from being on the relatively shy side to now where she's very open and vocal and actually, you know, leads on some of the activities that we do. But she was able to take what she learned from the momentum class and, and building her stamina. And now she participates in a lot of the regular group fitness classes, such as Soul Fusion and the bar class. So she's come a long way from no exercise, but by exercising on a consistent basis, getting the positive reinforcement from people in the class, she was able to translate that into to pushing herself to say, hey, I'm going to try group fitness classes. And she was successfully able to do that. Another person is Shelly. Shelly, very similar to Joan, she joined the class. And one of the things that Shelly said about the momentum class where she was very apprehensive because she wasn't used to exercise and, you know, she was nervous in being in a big group setting like that. But she said after the first day or two, she found that everybody was so welcoming and so willing to help and reinforce that she decided to stay. And she's been there well over a year now. And it's the amazing progress that she's had in terms of her physical fitness. So again, use 
classes to and buddies to help with your exercise because it's going to help you come a long way in being able to live a great quality of life. Now, before we close, I did mention that if you stay till the end, I would give you a bonus. And that bonus was is some of the playlists that I use. I, what I did is I, I took um, some of my playlists and I compiled it into one playlist. And I want to share that with you. Um, you may not like the music that I like to listen to. Uh, some of you may. Some of it includes classic rock. There's a little bit of pop in there. But th- this is what I use to help motivate me, whether it's weightlifting or whether I'm cycling or just doing exercise by myself if I go out for a walk. So let me get down through the list for you. The first one is Castle on a Hill by Ed Sheeran. Then we have My Champion by Alter Bridge. Kryptonite by Three Doors Down. Chemicals Between Us by Bush. Speak by Godsmack. Are You Ready by Disturbed. Send the Pain Below by Chevelle. King of New Orleans by Better Than Ezra. Ain't Talking About Love by Van Halen. Have a Nice Day by Bon Jovi. Diamond Eyes by Shinedown. Thunderstruck by ACDC. Zombie by Bad Wolves, which is a remake of the Cranberries song. Welcome to the Jungle by Guns N' Roses. And then finally, Undefeated by Skillet. So that's a playlist that I use to help me with the, you know, help me exercise and help motivate me as well. So let's go back and review the five proven strategies to help maintain exercise and help you live a great quality of life. The first one was find your fit. And we talked about picking, choosing activities that offer a wide variety and picking things that you enjoy and starting small and ramping it up from there. The second was befriend motivation and not pressure. So exercise should be fun and enjoyable, not something that you dread and it's a chore. Strategy number three was listen to your body, not your doubts. So it's, we talked about fighting through fatigue and then knowing uh, when, if you're in pain, that you need to get some help from a healthcare professional or a certified trainer to make sure that you're doing your exercises with proper form. Then strategy number four was make it play, not a chore. So again, we talked about, you know, use music to to help, you know, make exercising fun and enjoyable. Get outdoors, enjoy the outdoors and, you know, enjoy nature and exercise outside. It's a great way to get your exercise in and enjoy nature at the same time. And then finally, strategy number five was to celebrate every victory. It's not just the finish line. So remember, your exercise is a journey and not a destination. So as we conclude this, I want to thank you for listening to this podcast. And if you would, if you visit my website, liveparkinsons.com, I have a free resource guide that breaks the four strategies that I've used to live an exceptional life down into exercise, nutrition, Uh, attitude and mindfulness, and then community and social interaction. And I list both the national and some local and regional resources that you can use. So it's a a one-stop document that you can go and get all the references that you need from the experts and evidence-based science to help you uh, live a great quality of life with Parkinson's. Again, I thank you for listening, and I hope to see you on future podcasts. Thanks.